John Alzheimer is known as one of our nation's most recognized credit experts. Having worked for 28 years in the credit industry, John has become one of the most prolific speakers about credit and the go-to authority on answers to credit-related questions. Credit Countdown with John Alzheimer. Hello, my name is John Alzheimer, and I am a consumer credit expert. I have worked for FICO, the credit scoring company, and Equifax. Obviously, they are one of the three generally recognized consumer credit reporting agencies in the United States. And I've done concurrent work for dozens of credit-related entities over the past 16, 17 plus years. Um, this is my 30th year in the credit industry. So today's question has to do with uh, the, what's called piggybacking. And so let's first, let's define piggybacking and then we'll discuss piggybacking. So specifically, what is piggybacking? How long has it been around? And is it how does it affect your credit reports and your credit scores? I think the word piggybacking somehow has a pejorative context to it. Some people, when they use the term piggybacking, they're using it almost as a way to, to kind of criticize a practice that a consumer may be engaging in. So let me define what piggybacking is and then hopefully we can kind of clean up some myths about the practice. So piggybacking is a term that has really has only been around for about the last two decades. And it is meant to indicate that one particular consumer is associating themselves with the credit card account of another consumer for the purposes of essentially benefiting from the relationship between the two. And so, you know, I guess the word piggybacking is supposed to indicate that you are now piggybacking on top of, of someone else's of someone else's credit card account and, and, and benefiting from that relationship. So that's commonly referred to in the kind of the non-pejorative sense as becoming an authorized user on someone else's credit card account. That practice has been around for many, many decades, longer than the term piggybacking and considerably longer than I've been in the credit-related environment. Being added as an authorized user on someone else's credit card is certainly not considered to be a nefarious act. When people ask me how I established credit as a young person, that's how I did it. I was added, my father added me to a Citibank card that he had opened in the 1960s. It's not considered to be a nefarious activity. In fact, it's a very common way that consumers build credit for the first time or rebuild credit after some sort of a, you know, a credit-related disaster like a divorce or a loss of a job um, or you know, having to file bankruptcy for some reason. Being added as an authorized user is a, a, a common practice. It's not, not considered to be negative in any way. Piggybacking is a term that has almost been given to, to, to the practice. I'm, I don't know why it has now kind of taken over as the kind of the descriptor of the practice, but it's certainly being added as an authorized user on someone else's credit card is in and of itself not a nefarious act. I'm gonna add my son on my credit cards as an authorized user and that's how he's gonna establish credit. It worked for me, it'll work for him. Nothing wrong with the practice at all. So the benefit of doing it is, I, I like to call it a um, getting a credit card with training wheels to some extent. And the, the reason it's a, a great way to help someone to build credit is think about how you learned how to drive. I mean, no one in their right mind would ever just toss their keys to a 16 year old and say, hey, go out and pick me up a gallon of milk from the store. That's, that would be horribly irresponsible to do that. You know, people teach their children how to drive. They, they take driver's ed classes. Um, they, they have certain, in certain states, there's laws with respect to, you know, driving with certain types of licenses and how many people you can have in the car with you and how late you can drive. So obviously it seems like the, the entire world acknowledges that you can't just become a good driver through osmosis and you know, essentially turn 16 and be a good driver the next morning. That's just, that's a ridiculous thing to, to assume that that's the way it works. It's the same thing with credit. You can't just toss somebody a credit card when they turn 18 and expect that they know what in the world they're doing. Um, that would be as irresponsible in my mind as just tossing somebody a set of keys and assuming that they're gonna be a good driver. And so the way that, the way that this authorized user or piggybacking 
benefits a consumer is it allows them to be associated with a credit card account, a legitimate credit card account issued by a legitimate lender. However, they have no financial liability for any of the debt associated with the account. And so if I have a, uh, let's make one up, let's say I have a Discover credit card and I add my, my child as an authorized user on my Discover credit card, then there will be a card with his name created and he will have full charging rights into that account, just like I do as the primary cardholder. However, he will not have any sort of financial liability for the payment or an expectation for payment on that account. He is not liable, he's not a liable party, okay? He's not what's called an obligor. I'm the only obligor on the account. So you're probably wondering, well, how in the world does this help him to build credit? How did it help you to build credit? Well, this is how, I'm gonna answer that question now. Credit card issuers will commonly report authorized users to the credit reporting agencies. And so it's not uncommon to look at a credit report and see credit card accounts with a designation A indicating that that particular consumer, the, the person whose credit report has been accessed, is actually an authorized user on that particular credit card rather than a full obligor or liable party on the account. And so to the extent that the account is managed properly, meaning that it's paid on time, you have a low balance relative to the limit, and if you wanna throw a cherry on top, that the account is old, and you're really checking three boxes that credit scoring systems really like to see. They like to see old accounts, they like to see accounts that are always paid on time, and they like to see accounts, credit card accounts anyways, that have low balances relative to the credit limits. These are all things that are very beneficial to, to consumers' credit reports and also very beneficial to consumers' credit scores. And so, you know, you can call it piggybacking if you want, you can call it authorized user um, if you want. They kind of are all the same thing and they're a fantastic way to help build credit or rebuild credit if you've gone through some sort of a, a credit related disaster. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about piggybacking or authorized user or the benefit of doing the things like that, um, please leave them in the, in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day. For more videos and credit tips from John Olsheimer, go to www.tradelinesupply.com.